hi, this is Janet with Paper and Spark. This is part five, the fifth and final video tutorial as part of our series on how to use your inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet. If you don't have your inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet, it's available for sale at paperandspark.com. Okay, now that we've covered inventory and marking things sold, Let's move on to the final two tabs on your spreadsheet, and those are your sales tabs. The sales tab is just going to summarize information that you've entered on all the other tabs of the spreadsheet. And whether data is generated here is going to all depend on whether or not you're entering dates in the date sold column on your inventory tab. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. When you enter a date there, the sales tab will automatically sum the retail price and the cost of goods made price into the applicable months column. This way at the end of the month you can see your total sales and your total cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold means the total cost of supplies and raw materials that went into the finished goods you sold during that time period. Now we've previously talked a lot about cost of goods made that's how much all your finished inventory that's sitting for sale on your shelf costs you to make. And then as items on your shelf sell, they move into the cost of goods sold bucket, if that makes sense. The sales tab will calculate these two numbers for you on an ongoing basis and then also give you a running total for the year. That's why it's important to keep your inventory tab updated as each item sells. Now, since I originally recorded this video, I've made some updates to the inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet on the sales tabs each year. And that's because I noticed a lot of people have started downloading the spreadsheet in hopes of helping it calculate some important numbers on their tax return and I wanted to refine the way that the spreadsheet was calculating some of those inventory and cost of goods sold numbers. So if you have the updated version of the spreadsheet, um, it still calculates any near cost of goods sold the same way, um, but I kind of break out the ending year inventory numbers here. First, we've got our total purchases, our total materials and supply purchases for the year. That's why it's important that you enter the dates that you purchase the items on back on those material tabs. Then we've got your ending year finished goods inventory at cost. And then it also has ending year finished good inventory at retail. So this is just summing everything that should still be on your shelf finished goods at their sales price. And this number is just summing all those finished goods that should still be on your shelf at their cost. Um, for tax purposes though, you need the amount of both the finished goods left on your shelf and your materials that you still have on your shelf. And um, as I've explained, this spreadsheet doesn't track how many materials you use. It You only enter your materials as you purchase them, right? You don't go back and say, okay, this one's used up, so I'm gonna delete it or I'm going to lower it by five units or whatever. You can't do that on this spreadsheet because it would mess up the pricing formula sheet. Um, but there is a way that the spreadsheet can basically back into how much your total ending materials inventory is, basically by calculating cost of goods sold throughout the year and all these other numbers, we can back into what this number should be. And then the sum of these two numbers, your ending year finished goods inventory at cost and your ending materials inventory will give us your total ending inventory. And this is the number that um, you can use as a basis for Schedule C on your tax return. I'm always hesitant to suggest that you just blindly rely upon that number. You should most likely go do a physical count of your ending inventory and your ending materials and supplies to verify that these numbers are reasonable and accurate. Um, but 
the updates to the spreadsheet now give you a bit more clear of a view um, for tax purposes of what's going on as far as cost of goods sold and ending material and inventory go. Again, a lot of the formulas uh, on the sales tabs pull from the other tabs on the spreadsheet based on dates that you're entering. So if you're not entering dates for whatever reason, either on the date purchase tab or on your inventory tab for dates sold, then these tabs aren't going to be um, giving you accurate informa information. So just keep that in mind. Another important thing to note uh, is that there's no beginning inventory here. We're assuming in 2015 that beginning inventory is zero. And then as you go on into future years, your beginning inventory line is going to show up and this line is going to just link to your ending total inventory from last year. So if you're going to use these numbers for tax purposes, you've got to make sure that you're doing it right from year to year because the ending inventory from one year is going to become the beginning inventory next year. So this is pretty much how your inventory cost and pricing spreadsheet works. It can do a lot of analysis for you and a lot of number crunching. Just make sure that you're using it and updating it consistently. You're entering your raw material and supply purchases as you purchase them. You're um, linking to your new products as you create them. You're consistently monitoring your overhead rate for any changes. Um, you're going through the exercise of, of pricing and making sure you feel comfortable with the prices. You're entering it on the inventory list, the date that you list it for sale and the date that you sell it. Um, and you can also use this spreadsheet to do some other things like develop wholesale line sheets, um, or create uh, bulk discounts. You can use your spreadsheet to analyze whether your pricing markups are creating a big enough profit margin for you to grow and for you to pay yourself appropriately. You can use your spreadsheet at tax time to generate some important numbers that you need on your tax return. Um, you can do a lot with it. So I hope that you find it helpful. Um, if you have any questions or suggestions or feedback for me or frustrations, maybe something's not working how you anticipate, you can always feel free to reach out to me. My email address is paperandspark at gmail.com. And thank you again for purchasing. I wish you many happy sales. Thank you.